Hey everyone, today we are in downtown Kansas City, Kansas, and you can hear some church bells going. It's Sunday morning. But we are here to visit an Indian burial ground that's in here in the middle of the city next to a library and some government buildings. This is the Huron Indian Burial Ground, but it's also known as the Wyandotte National Burial Ground. So you can see it says Indian Cemetery there. It's a little bit on the trashy side right here at the entrance. So here it says, Huron Cemetery, open dawn to dusk. A little bit of uh, trash around here. There are some homeless around here, so I think that's what this is from. A lot of carpet and clothing and stuff like that. Kind of sad to see stuff like that. And then as you get through here, these little walkways and a little bit of disrepair here. So you got to watch your step and see where some of the planks have busted out. Little sketchy walking on this, to be honest. Looks like you could fall through at any minute. It's not a big fall if I do fall. It looks like they were starting some construction on it and never finished. Look how bad that is right there. Now that would be a little bit more of a fall there, but it's still not too bad. You might tumble down the hill. But it's this burial ground cemetery up here in the middle of downtown Kansas City. That's a uh, public library right there. And uh, like I said, no one knows exactly how many have been buried here. So the Wyandotte have quite a history with this ground right here. Let's see who we have. Eudora Emmons, if I'm saying that name correctly. No birth date, it says a question mark, but 1877. You can see how many final resting places there are, at least that are marked. There's a lot that are probably unmarked as they've been taken or torn up or worn away. Some of these will be uh, not legible at all. This says unknown right there, actually. But that is the base to another one, whether it's to that same one or not. Don't know. So the Wyandotte are a native tribe. It came from the Ohio area. Here's another unknown. And they had their own trail of tears, and they came by steamboat here. Here you can see a headstone that is broken off but it says Edward Johnson and Charlotte Johnson no dates Maud Johnson and Harry Johnson there's a lot of little ones just kind of mixed in here but in between you know that there are other ones these are some unknowns here it looks like I would pause on them longer if they said something here's one with dates Joseph White, 1830-1956. But as I was saying, they came here by steamboat and were dumped off. And when they got here, they started getting the measles, which took out about a hundred of them or so. And then they had a rain for six weeks straight, which caused flooding. And so a lot of them died from that as well. They purchased... A, some land here which includes this burial ground from the Delaware tribe and that's the beginnings of this uh, cemetery and so the first burials in here were those that contracted the uh, measles and died from the floods and this cemetery begins somewhere around 1840s somewhere in through there and then there's other burials in here and there's been movements to try and move this burial ground. Now this goes a ways back. This is like the early 1900s possibly. And there were people that just guarded this to keep it from being moved. This is a, see it says, many unmarked graves in this area. William E. Connolly, 
survey 1895 to 1896. It was around that time period, probably late 1800s, early 1900s, where the big movement was to move the burial grounds. And so there were people from the tribe that tried to camp out here and defend it, basically, I guess you could say. Let's see who this is, just with this fenced-in area like this. Charles B. Garrett, 1794-1867, and Maria W. Garrett, 1807-1866. Now, there are some writings on this, I suppose saying the same thing, but they are completely worn down and you can't read it at all. And then it looks like it had a headpiece up there, a little topper, I guess you could say. And uh, it's not there anymore. So like I said, this is called the Huron Cemetery, but that is actually an insulting word. It's a French word, so I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying it correctly. But it's an insult because the French thought that the headpiece that the Wyandotte War looked like a uh, like a wild hog. And so that's what they called them. So it's really an insult. So if you say Huron Cemetery to a Wyandotte, they're going to correct you probably. Harriet Butler, 1837 to 1870, an infant daughter, August to September of 1870. And you can see, like I said, there's missing headstones in here. And, the, and luckily they've done a good job of Putting some replacements of those that they know about but there's others that they just don't that are in between but uh you know vandals or just people wanting them gone stuff like that here's one that's here it's not legible but they've placed this other james big tree 1796 to 1856 quite a few it's actually a lot bigger than I was expecting it to be. Looks like Tall Charles, 1801 to 1856. It is bigger than what I thought it would be, and there's also a lot more marked than I thought there would be. Barrett Barnett, son of Reverend W and M. 1843 to 1858 that's a young one there 15 years old you can see here no telling how old they are i guess or maybe they've planted them more recently but these are flowers that have been planted on, on around this pretty common to see that particular type not a green thumb though so i can't tell you exactly what it is don't know if they're daffodils or what I see a couple lone standing ones over there, or maybe they're stumps. Isn't it interesting that this building right here, which looks like it was, I don't know if it still is, but like apartments. And they have sort of the fire escape that comes down into this side, and then they have their maintenance ladder here. I don't know seems kind of odd to me that they would build that and allow that to happen but laws have been passed these are definitely marking something I believe even this rock probably so here's some more rocks and an unknown marker there so you can see some markers here and there are no plates such as this but that's clearly the base of where a little headstone was and you can see two over here so no the sun's shining in the camera unknown and it says a hundred unmarked graves in this area by survey maybe with the tribal records and stuff like that they also might have probed the ground who knows but I'm sure it's from tribal members that's an unknown but it might have said something on that stone at one time. You can see more just sort of dotting the burial ground here. It really is kind of neat how this elevates like this. 
And you can see this sign over there where it says the Huron Indian Cemetery, but better, better should be better known as the Wyandotte National Cemetery. Frank Brown, 1900 to 1935. So that's obviously another entrance into it. Unknown there, unknown here. It's like maybe they were starting some work and then never finished. I don't know if it's the city or the tribe. Does need a little bit of fixing up and some care. Now the Wyandotte kind of spread out nowadays. They came down into Oklahoma and they have been designated a nation, but they're still in several different states. See, this is many unmarked graves in this area. This William Connolly did a heck of a survey job here. So it's really difficult to tell how many are in here. Here you can see another staircase that they built, cover up the sun here and it is eroded away and broken kind of looks like people have been walking up there if they think this is the entrance here because there are some signs all the way around designating what this is we'll kind of start on this side get out of the sun maybe a little bit so francis driver 1802 to 1847 matilda driver hicks 1805 to 1866. Mary A. Driver, 1844 right there, and same right here with Martha. They were pretty young. I mean, that one right there is 11 years old and 14 years old. Right in that uh, rough time period of what I was telling you about where the measles happen. Many more unmarked graves right here. It's just all over the place. They don't know exactly how many are in here. So, Ronton D, or Warpole, 1775 to 1843, definitely a measles one right there, I believe. Dr. Gray Eyes, that's an interesting one. 1795 to 1845. There's an unknown one right here. Margaret Charlot, 1780 to 1859. Louis Barnett, I've seen a few of the Barnetts so far. 1832 to 1858. James T. Charlo, a couple of those, 1804 to 1854. That is an unknown there. It's going to be impossible for me to hit all of these. I thought we would just hit some random ones. Never know what you might see. Many more unmarked graves is what that's stating. And then you can see uh, one right in through here. It's got some trash. It's interesting because... It looks like they've done this maybe a little bit on purpose and it got out of control, but just there's sort of a round area where things are growing here. Um, but that says unknown. Several rocks around it. And a broken headstone there. You can see a little marker right there. And it is not legible with anything. This is, uh, these are some of the better ones in here. Tabitha Thomas, 1894 to 1914. The unknown in the middle. Seymour Thomas, 1840 to 1891. The main marker is not legible at all. You can see this one here would have had a headstone. George Thomas, 1875 to 1879. Really young right there. There's an unknown. Can see there there's a now this is one here that's different from the style that's there one missing here 
and uh, Catherine Clark, 1808 to 1858. George Clark here. This is a this is a big one here. Head chief of the Wyandotte Nation, 1802 to 1858. So that's an interesting find. You can see a couple more sun flare there. A couple more that are over there, just unmarked, broken. Harriet Clark, obviously relatives of the head chief, 1840 to 1858, so young. And uh, Mary Clark, 1842 to 1882. Over here we have some more. We'll see what these are. That's that's some big ones right in through here. ZA, which I'm guessing is for Armstrong. It's like Zelinda Armstrong, born in 1820 and died February 10th, 1883, I believe. It's a little hard to read. And then uh, Silas Armstrong died December 14th, 1865, aged 55 years. The pioneer of the Wyandotte Indians to the Kansas Valley in 1842. The leading man and constant friend of the Indian. A devout Christian and good mason. He leaves the chart on the earth and goes with joy to the great architect. Pretty interesting. Uh, and it's there's kind of like an ark right here, like Noah's Ark and an anchor. And it looks like there was a top piece there as well. There's nothing on that side and nothing on that side. So we have Aaron Vetter, 1857 to 1958. And this looks like a young one with that little baby up top. It's kind of hard to read. Step in the shadow, it gets a little bit easier. McHenry, son of H something and M Northrup, died December 14th, 1857, aged three years and 25 days. Thomas Northrup. 1852 to 1876. Now here's a big one of the Northrop. Margaret, wife of Hiram Northrop, born August 28th, 1828, and married November 27th, 1845, died June 29th, 1887. A true and faithful Christian and noble wife is what it says. It's a nice looking one. Reaches up pretty high. Thomas Snyder, 1887 to November 9th, 1929. And then Milton Northrup, son of Hiram and Margaret. So on this side of it, it actually says Hiram M. Northrup, June 4th, 1818 to March 22nd, 1893. Some uh, other relatives here, Margaret Northrup Staley, 1865 to 1940. Jacob Grover Staley, 1862 to 1940. And that's probably another one that's a relative but unknown. Eugene J. Snyder Jr., 1885 to 1927. And there's just sort of this area where there was like plants that's rounded off. see some of these others over here that's an unknown this one right here a little sun flare sorry about that we, we looked at that I think Thomas Northrup maybe we didn't 1852 to 1875 look how you can barely read any of that it shows up better on camera but it is completely broken but at least they have that there some more right over there. And then uh, Aaron Vetter. Let's see, we did that one. Whatever, 
whatever was on this and this is really broken and it's been repaired they you can see where they've tried to glue it back and stand it up but I can't see anything legible on it at all so there's no telling who that is or who this is right here this says Charlie Prindle and Elizabeth his wife Charlie passed in 1905 and Elizabeth passed in 1909 Wendell Chi. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Quite a long name. Eight, 1783 to 1844. John Gibson, 1807 to 1859. And then an unknown right next to it. This one over here is one of the biggest ones. Maybe not the tallest, but it's one of the fattest. It says uh, Barnes. Now it might have been taller. Well, it would have been taller for sure. Um, with that topper up there. So it might have been the tallest one in the whole cemetery. Everything is worn down except for a B on the side right there. And then that barns. So I have no idea who it is. Antoinette Barnes. 1858 to 1882 an infant daughter I can faintly see some sort of writing in through here but it's all gone looks like it started up through there and you can see where people have come in here and just carved on it which is sad I don't know if it's homeless or kids or what Harry Shattenberg 1870 to 1896 Catherine Long, 1793 to 1854. Quite a few unmarks right through here. Francis Hicks, this is a good one. Head Chief of the Wyandotte Nation, 1800 to 1855. That's a big one right here. And then we have James Washington, another big one, head chief of the Wyandotte Nation, 1787 to 1852. George Armstrong. Interesting name. That one obviously had a plaque right there. The headstone, the original, is broken, and then they put a plaque there. And maybe someone has broken the plaque, or when they mowed it, they accidentally broke it. Ethan Long. And we have James Rakin, 1775 to 1851. As you can see, the original there kind of broken and not legible. This just says Williams. Question mark for the birth and then 1857 for the death. Charlotte Williams. 1781 to 1855 there's actually one right in the middle of this and it says unknown would have been known at one point with that marker there though this one is really getting worn down you can see where the writing was on there and uh it's just fading you can't even read it and on top of that they had a marker here and it is gone whether maintenance accidentally busted it or they still have it somewhere or someone stole it don't know florence walker march to october 1845 a young one mary ann walker 1819 to 1886 this is joel something died in 1857 a lot of that is worn down and can't tell anything else because that little placard or marker on the bottom is gone
this says unknown and we have a Lydia sweet lad John Wanton lad Lydia passed away in 1869 and John in 1865 Celia Alverson lad this is a lad family through here 1854 and a lad is 1885 and then Sarah lad with no dates some of these are still visited though so it's not a matter of this is abandoned or anything like that you can see where this is uh, some newer ones I guess you could say newer mother and daddy uh, last name is ship it's Harry and Kate and Harry passed away in 1929 and mother in 1958 and someone has placed flowers maybe from last Memorial Day Robert Roy Robert Ship 1888 to 1918 the Zane 1916 1903 so as you can see there are some newer type ones let's see who this big one is over here or several here that says unknown the toppers are off of those plaque is missing and you can't read it this is a Northrop Tommy E Northrop 1886 one year old right here this is Andrus B Northrop uh, 1849 to 1892 almost thought that said at 1802 I was like there's something not right but uh, lived a little bit longer Frank a Northrop medical doctor look at that November 3rd 1879 to February 23rd 1965 what is that I, I know it's a mason is it like a third degree mason I guess I'm not sure what that is at the bottom if someone's familiar with that Martha EF, daughter of MG and AM. Here are some that are from earlier. That's Ida Connolly, departed this life October 6, 1948. And we have a 1880, 1879. This is all the Connolly. So that makes sense. Conley, the guy surveying its name, I think was similar to this. Maybe the spelling was a little bit different, but I wonder if he was a Wyandotte Nation member as well. Look here. Elizabeth Burton Conley departed this life May 28, 1946, attorney at law, only woman ever admitted to the United States Supreme Court. Hmm. Interesting. Helena Connolly Floating Voice. Wyandotte Nation Burial Ground. Cursed be the villain that molests their graves. Infant Zane, child of James and Mary. Here is James C. Zane and William Zane. And it is really worn down, cracked, and it's been repaired. We have an unknown Sarah Zane and Hester Fish. So, uh, pretty interesting there. I like the way that there's sort of this border around here and the rocks in there. This is about it. Oh man, that's a tough one. I don't know if that's Zaurus or if it's pronounced differently. My guess is that that X is a Z sound. So we have Father 1929, Sister 1919, two years old right there. It's interesting, there's an H right here, but this is for Harding. Mary Emma Harding. And here we have Newton Harding, Company A, 132nd Indian Infantry, 1844 to 1905. That's a government marker right there. Kenneth Zane Harding. And then Lawrence Zane. And some more Zane family members right through here. 
Zane Gray Youngins, 1921 to 1922. Someone placed flowers on that unknown there. It's hard to say how long ago those flowers were placed here. Little Nerot, or Little Nero, maybe? Age three months. Might have been more on that stone right there. Freddie Moore, 1887 to 1888, and Charles, Charlie Moore, 1886 to 1887. So like I said, I think they got in the middle of a project to restore this. Don't know if it was the city or the Wyandot Nation. But one other interesting thing about this cemetery is that there are lights. You can see one right here and one right there where these trees are sort of lit up at night, I guess. I didn't see this. I got out here right when the sun was coming up, which is kind of bad for some of the angles of the uh, final resting places. And then there's some kind of pole over here that's like a stand. Maybe it had a sign on that or a statue or something like that. I'm not sure. It's not a flagpole, though. So this video was a little bit longer than what I thought it would be. We didn't visit every grave, but we visited quite a few. So it's going to be a little bit longer. But if you're into this kind of thing, Native American history, then it's interesting. And this is right in the middle of Kansas City. I'm not even exactly sure how many people within Kansas City know about this or know about the history. So I think it's worth documenting and sharing. So I appreciate you guys joining me on this little walkthrough of an old Wyandotte National Indian Burial Ground, sacred ground, and uh, would love to see some of the repairs done to it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Look at the squirrels popping up through the broken area of the deck right there. Like I said, there's seen several homeless through here. And I think that's where the trash is coming from. Hopefully I don't fall through this. You can feel some of these give. This is the most intact staircase or uh, ramp as you want to call it into the cemetery. I'm not sure when they tried to initiate some repairs. If anyone knows, leave a comment below. can see the lights all the way around the cemetery right there lighting this up might be something to come by and see at night